welcome to Blau Parts. Today we're going to be changing the motor oil and oil filter on a 2010 Volkswagen Jetta with the 2 liter TDI diesel engine. We're going to be using one of our oil change kits. The oil change kit for the 2 liter TDI has the appropriate amount of Revenol VMP 5W30 motor oil for an oil change. Some of the key features of the Revenol VMP. It's formulated and made in Germany. It is a 100% fully synthetic PAO motor oil. It has Revenol's industry-changing clean Sinto technology. As well, Revenol VMP has formal factory approval from Volkswagen for the VW50700 oil quality standard. This oil quality standard is the recommended oil that should be used in all of Volkswagen's TDI diesel engines that were equipped with a diesel emission particulate filter system, also known as the DPF. Also, with the formal factory approval of the Revenol VMP, it is suitable for the factory recommended 10,000 mile oil change interval, which is what Volkswagen recommended for the 2 liter TDI diesel engines. Also, on a side note, we've had several customers notice an improvement of anywhere between 4 and 8% increase in fuel mileage when switching from their old brand of oil to the Revenol VMP. Also in our oil change kit, we have the Mala Original Oil Filters. Mala has been making filters since the late 1920s. They are an official OE supplier. They've been supplying many of the German car makers such as Volkswagen, Audi, BMW, Porsche, and Mercedes. This oil filter includes the necessary O-rings for an oil filter replacement as well as the pre-assembled O-ring that is on the filter. When it comes to the drain plug, we include the drain plug in our oil change kit. It's the exact design and function as the factory drain plug with the built-in sealing washer. So this is what's included in our oil change kit. Let's get started on changing the oil. The first thing you can do is make sure the engine is warm and this will allow the oil to better flow from the engine as it's draining. Also, you can loosen the oil cap, and I just like to leave it op over the opening, uh, and this will also uh, aid the oil as it flows from the engine. There are two locking tabs here on the front side, and as you're pulling out the splash pan, you can push up on these locking tabs and slide the splash pan towards the back of the vehicle. Next, using a 19 millimeter socket, you can remove the drain plug, and as well you want to drain it into a suitable drain pan. Once all the old oil is drained, you can reinstall the new drain plug with built-in sealing washer. and torque the drain plug to the factory 22 foot-pounds of torque. Again, that's 22 foot-pounds of torque. As well, clean up any old oil residue around the drain plug. Next, we're going to access the oil filter housing, which is located under the decorative engine cover. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually put the oil fill cap back on, uh, just so when we pull the decorative engine cover off, uh, I don't get any dirt or sand, uh, debris into the engine. Uh, there's four grommets on each corner of the decorative engine cover, so just gently pull up on one corner at a time. And you want to be careful when you're doing this just so you don't crack any of the plastic. Before we can access the oil filter housing and remove the oil filter, we're going to remove this T30 Torx, which is holding this coolant line in place. Uh, this will allow us a little bit of play in this coolant line so we can access the filter housing with the 32 millimeter socket.
once I have the oil filter housing cover loosened, I like to actually pull it up and allow the filter and cover to drain a little bit. You can maybe wait uh, anywhere between 15 to 20 seconds. And this will help in an effort to minimize any dripping onto the engine or down to an area where you can't necessarily clean it off. So once you've done that, I like to have some old rags handy and as well the drain pan in an area where you can put the filter right away so you don't drip anywhere. And then you want to guide it out in such a way that you can minimize as much dripping as possible. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the old oil filter from the housing. And you can do this by pulling upwards. The next thing we can do is remove the oil filter housing cover o-ring. Your new oil filter came with a new o-ring. Next using the new o-ring uh, you can reinstall it onto the filter housing cover but you're going to want to lubricate it with some fresh oil. So I like to get at least one or two fingers wet with a little bit of fresh oil. If you're wondering why I'm pouring from the jug, it's because I'm using the Revenol VMP bag and box. So it's the exact same as you're going to get in the bottles, just obviously a 20 liter. And you just want to guide the O-ring on in such a way that you don't stretch it out too much just into the groove right on the housing. Also you're going to want to lubricate the o-ring on the bottom side of the oil filter. You can use some fresh oil for this. I like to get my fingers a little wet and just simply lubricate it. Next you can pop the oil filter in this orientation. This is the bottom portion of the filter. You can pop it down into the filter cover until you hear it click like that. Next you can install the new oil filter and the oil filter housing cover. You just want to confirm that you're properly threading it in before you start just so you don't cross thread it. It is a plastic cover. And you're going to want to torque it to the 25 newton meters or 18 foot pounds. Reinstall the T30 Torx in the coolant line. Next you can remove the oil fill cap and begin filling the engine with oil. If you're run wondering why I'm Filling it with this jug, it's because I'm using the Revenol VMP bag and box, which is the 20 liter bag and box. So obviously, if you're getting in one of our oil change kits, it's going to be in a 5 liter jug or a 1 liter jug. Reinstall the oil fill cap. Next thing we're going to do is actually start the engine. We're going to allow the oil to flow into the filter housing and then we're going to turn the engine off so we can get an accurate fluid level or oil level indication from the dipstick. Next, using the dipstick, you can get an accurate oil level indication. What I like to do is clean off the indicator at the end, reinsert it back into the engine, and this will give you a very accurate oil level and as you can see uh, we have a perfect oil level at 5 liters of oil in here. Before reinstalling the decorative engine cover we're going to check for leaks around the oil filter housing. 
from the short period of time we were running the engine. If you do not have any oil leaks there, you can reinstall the decorative engine cover. When installing the decorative engine cover, you have four posts, one here, 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 and here, and those correlate to four grommets that are installed in the decorative engine cover, so you want to line those up. And then you can just firmly push down until you hear them pop in each, each of the four corners. Before installing the splash pan, you're going to want to confirm you have no leaks coming from the drain plug area. You can reinstall the splash pan. You want to line up the tabs here on the front side. torques on the back side. At least get those started. And you can reinstall the single T25 torques up, up front and as well work your way around the sides. Also, it's best to just start them all and get them all in place and then you can work your way around and tighten them all up. If you tighten one or two up right away, some of the other fasteners might not line up and it might be more difficult to install. So. And just start by lining them up. And these don't have to be very tight, just snug them up. So that's an overview on how to change your motor oil and oil filter on a 2010 Volkswagen Jetta TDI. For more Volkswagen repair and maintenance information, or if you have any questions on the products we carry, feel free to visit our website at blowparts.com. Thanks for watching.